Property investors, the game is up. The government blindsided them today, axing a loophole investors use to pay less and often no tax. It'll also make them pay tax if they sell a house within 10 years. The winners are first home buyers, with income and house price caps for first home grants increased. And the government's created a $3.8 billion housing acceleration fund to provide the infrastructure to get more developments underway. So, have they solved the housing crisis? Here's political reporter Jenna Lynch. Packing up to move up north, Alan Quirk is sick of trying and failing to buy a house in Auckland. Quickly realised that buying something in Auckland wasn't going to be possible. Off to Whangarei, uprooting her family again. My stepdaughters lived and we were trying to count them over 10 houses in her life and she's nine. And that's just from the feel fact that we've never been able to afford to, to buy something. The government tried to make it easier for them today, extending the first home grant scheme. To be eligible for up to $10,000 in a government cash grant, sole buyers can now earn up to $95,000. Couples are eligible for up to $20,000 if they earn under one hundred and fifty dollars combined. About 3,500 more single buyers will be eligible and 9,000 more couples. The government also lifted the price caps for the homes you can buy with those grants. Auckland's price cap for new builds is now $700. 100,000 while existing properties must be bought for under 625,000 in Wellington homes can be up to 650 to build or 550 for an old house while in Nelson, Tauranga and Hamilton the caps were lifted to 600 and 525 our view is that this will make a difference. Trying to find a property that's under $650,000 in Auckland is near impossible. Not just Auckland, the government uses the example of a cop buying a one-bedroom unit for five hundred grand in Upper Hutt. This is the trade me search for that property. There is no one silver bullet, so we are pulling all of the levers we have. Including pulling the big old tax lever. The Bright Line test, a tax on investment property if you sell within a certain period, was extended from five to ten years, though there is a carve-out for new builds. They've taken the right line test, turned it into a full-scale capital gains tax. It's the lever Labor specifically promised not to pull. You completely ruled out an extension to the bright line test. Why have you extended it? You know, we were we were silent on the bright line test. No, they weren't. Grant Robertson was directly asked about it on the election campaign. So the bright line tax, for example, you will not change? You know, I was too definitive in my comments in that interview. The Labour Party has lied to New Zealanders. But this whopping broken promise wasn't the thing that caught property investors off guard. The removal of a tax loophole came out of nowhere. I'm definitely feeling blindsided. Blindsided and under attack. It's really like the government is deciding that we're the, we're the um, villains in this case and really we are providing houses for people to live in. We are trying to tilt the playing field towards first home buyers. Breaking promises to try to mend first home buyers broken dreams. Well, kia ora, Jenna. Politically, has the Prime Minister made the right call? It is a significant broken promise, arguably Jacinda Ardern's biggest one yet. Setting the bright line test at 10 years is effectively a capital gains tax. Jacinda Ardern decisively ruled out introducing a capital gains tax on her watch. In fact, she said she'd even resign before introducing one. Having said that, the housing crisis has reached catastrophe. A tax like this is bread and butter stuff for Labour. It is a good move for a Labour Prime Minister to introduce one. Jacinda Ardern has political capital to spend. This is the right place to spend it. Perhaps she just shouldn't have ruled it out in the first place.